I still say to this day that trappers are more in tune with the land that they walk on than any other sport out there. Um, I've talked about it multiple times. You know, you're out here every single day. You're looking for something. You are, I am trying to make this critter right here step on something that big, and he has got all of this he can walk on. That to me is cool. That's appealing. Yeah. <laughs> Last year the water was like up here. <laughs> that's, how, that's how bad of a drought we're in. All right, y'all, welcome back to another one. All right, so before we get going, just wanna say here, um, been getting some great, great feedback from y'all. Uh, we, holidays coming up, we still have uh, the Cook Creek Outdoors hoodies and t-shirts. Let's see if I can show you the backside of it. Nice, nice big logo on the hoodies and the t-shirts. Ah. Um, same design on both the, the, the t-shirts and the hoodies. Anyway, great way to support the channel. Holidays coming up if you're looking for a gift idea. Uh, but getting some great feedback from you all as far as, uh, you know, the quality. The, these are, are hand screen printed from a small shop in Indiana. This isn't some like Teespring thing, you know. And uh, the feedback from you has been awesome. This has been my one that I've been wearing now for, you know, a few weeks. Uh, washed it several times. Held up great. It's dirty, obviously. But, uh, yeah, just a really nice, comfortable quality uh quality hoodie and t-shirt so check them out if you're interested great way to support the channel it would be the very first link in the description down below all right so get back to the video what got me into trapping or why i started you know that is definitely a question that i get all the time and uh i personally i really like hearing stories and and stuff like that as far as you know, what, what got people interested in it. So before I tell you my story, we're gonna do something that I think is gonna be really cool. So for those of you out there that have uh, YouTube channels, uh, Instagram accounts, Facebook, whatever, what, I, what I'm challenging y'all to do is to, to basically make a video like this and uh, explain you know why you got started in trapping who helped you what was your motivation for it and use the hashtag cco trapping challenge okay use that use that hashtag in the title whether it be on on youtube uh facebook instagram whatever and hopefully uh if you post it in the over the next coming weeks everybody in this community will be able to go back search that hashtag and we'll have just a, a big compilation of, of stories. I, I think it'd be really cool. So like I said, if you, wanna, if you wanna join in in this challenge, use that hashtag CCO Trapping Challenge and, uh, and make you a video, a little short something. And uh, I think it'd be really cool. Um, if you don't have any of that, leave a comment down below. Uh, and I would, I would really, really enjoy, I, I read all the comments. Like I said, there's, there's really no way I can reply to them all, but I do read all the comments. And uh, so put in the comment section, what got you started or what was your motivation in trapping? So if we can really get this to take off, I think it'd be really cool. Remember, use the hashtag in the title, CCO Trapping Challenge. And in that way, we'll all be able to, to search it. So anyway, what I'm up to today here is I am just running a small line. Kind of my trapping this year has been um, kind of a mix between basically nuisance trapping or taking care of a lot of the landowners. Right now, the populations of, of coyotes, coons, everything has just spiked because there's nobody hunting, there's nobody trapping. And uh, we just didn't have the distemper die off like we normally did this year. I, I, I know we didn't. Um, I scanned just one little 10 acre field the other night and I counted nine different coons uh, in the trees. And I mean, you know, there's that many more on the ground, right? So I've been doing a lot of that, just taking care of the landowners, appeasing them. So I've been doing a lot of uh, a trapping around barns, homesteads, kind of, pasture ground, if you will. Uh, and I've been mixing that in with just kind of fun trapping. Um, what I've got as far as, you know, kind of my fur to sell, I can, I'll basically be able to get that without having to, you know, spend a lot of gas, run a big line, uh, so I can kind of mix it up. So I've been doing a lot of these fun sets like this. Um, if you guys 
actually remember from last year, I, I put this set in last year. This is a, a big, just a log over a creek. And uh, I just chopped in a spot for this one and a half. I just put this in. Just used one of my, my cable anchors, which are also linked down below if you guys want to check those out. Uh, signature series cable anchors. But I just anchored to this tree here. I had this spot notched out from last year and uh, just stuck a one and a half in it. Just a log crossing. I know there's probably better ways to do it, but you know, it's one of those kind of novelty sets that like you see in all the trapping magazines. I could probably put a dirt hole on each side and do better, but I actually did catch a muskrat in this exact same set last year. So if you, that's how bad, bad of a drought we're in. The water was obviously, you know, as high as this log last year at certain times. So yeah, definitely in a drought. All right, so what got me started into trapping? Um, you know, my, my trapping history may be a little different from a lot of people. Um, I had absolutely no mentors. Uh, you know, growing up trapping, trapping just wasn't a thing around, around here. Uh, you know, in my area of the world, you either, basically you had your four seasons. In August, squirrel season came in, that transitioned into dove hunting in September. And then by the time October rolled around, you were deer hunting. I mean, I live in, in, you know, whitetail capital of the country, basically. And you whitetail hunted and you whitetail hunted until duck season rolled around. And once the waterfowl season rolled around, that's kind of what you, uh, you know, that's kind of what you finished out the year with if you were really all into that, or you picked one or the other. Uh, me personally, I was growing up, I, I was just really involved with everything. And, uh, you know, so I kind of did a, I did a little bit of everything, but definitely deer hunting was the big thing. So schools let out for deer season. I mean, it was kind of like an unofficial holiday for for our shotgun season here. Uh, you know, you just you didn't go to school. That was that was your couple of days that you got to take off. So yeah, deer hunting's huge, um, and I did that. So I had always kind of dabbled around with with trapping. I had you know a few footholds and uh, and live traps and and things like that growing up. My trapping really really took off whenever I got my driver's license. Um, I grew up in the middle of a cornfield, literally. Uh, if you can imagine, you know, like a thousand acres of agricultural land and then like two or three houses kind of positioned throughout that. That's where I grew up. So I didn't have a lot of access to, to trapping ground. So once I got my driver's license, uh, it opened up a whole new world to me. And uh, that's kind of really whenever my trapping took off. Um, but why my trapping took off, you know, I, and I look back and, and there, I, I still remember the day. Um, so in Illinois, we, we shoot uh, shotguns, shotguns and muzzleloaders and bows is how you can you can harvest, or at that time, that's how you, that, those were the only methods to take take deer was, we had a shotgun season, we had a muzzleloader season, and uh, then we had your regular bow. And, you know, I had taken deer with, with shotgun, I had taken deer with compound bow, recurve bow, and I, I was really into the deer hunting thing. Uh, like I said, that's kind of what you grew up with. And I remember right whenever inline muzzleloaders came out, um, this was kind of around that time. It, it was a little before that, but where I could afford an inline muzzleloader. And mind you, with shotgun, you're fairly limited on distance. I mean, that's the reason that, that you know, they use shotguns, uh, you know, it's kind of in more populated areas. You know, they just don't quite have the range of a big center fire rifle. Uh, so you're looking at, you know, 150, 200 yards. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty much where that, you know, that's about the max. You can obviously stretch it out a little bit more, but that was kind of, that was a long poke, you know, and it was a long poke for around here just because, you know, we don't have the open country. And uh, and I remember whenever inline muzzleloaders came out, I, I bought one, I bought one of the, it was a Thompson Center inline and it had like a 28 or 30 inch barrel, big long barrel. And I had that sucker I had that sucker where I could shoot past 300 yards with it accurately. And that was my goal, uh, was, was that following season to actually, you know, take a deer at, at long range because I'd never been able to do it, right? Of course, there's a plane. 
I kid you not, I could be on a deserted island, had not seen a person for a hundred days. I turn a camera on and there'd be a plane come. But anyway, so went in that season with my, with my big inline muzzleloader, I'm gonna shoot this deer distance. And, and I got set up, I got it on a big field and I knew where they were coming out of the fence row. And, and I was like, I'm gonna really, I'm gonna do this. And sure enough, come that muzzleloader season, that's what happened. And, and I ended up taking that deer at like 325 yards, which is, you know, a poke for a, you know, an inline muzzleloader back then. I mean, this was, this was a long time ago. And, uh, and I smacked that deer and I, I still remember I was sitting in the stand. I was like, Hmm, well, I got that done. Now what do I do? I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd hunted deer every different way I could. The, the flyways were changing for duck hunting. So it was not great. And, uh, you know, I was looking for something else to do. I just, I, I am, I always want to challenge myself and I'd kind of peaked with the whole deer hunting thing. I mean, I've killed some nice deer, but I'm not a horn hunter. So, I mean, that didn't really bother me. Uh, I was just, I've always been more about the experience of it. And I was like, okay, well, I, I don't know what to do. I've shot a deer at seven yards with a recurve bow and I've shot a deer, at, you know, 325 yards with a, with a muzzle loader. I need something else to challenge myself. So it was that following winter that, that I really kind of dove into the trapping thing. And, and I had had, I, I had had a few traps, a few footholds. Um, dog proofs were kind of really starting to come into the scene. Uh, at least I, I, I had became aware of them, you know, I think the following year or two. But I went into that first season there that I really decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch some fur and, and I'm gonna do this. And boy, was it humbling. Uh, I, I obviously didn't have a mentor, but I had a few footholds um, and a few live traps. So and I still remember, this is funny, I still remember this, this moment. And I, I was talking to a buddy of mine, and like I said, there wasn't a lot of trapping. So like everything that I was doing, a lot of people were interested in because it just it was kind of a rarity. And I remember I struggled so hard that first year with footholds. Uh, you know, I just, I just didn't have the technique. I didn't know what I was doing, but I'll be damned. I could catch the hell out of some stuff in a live trap. And I remember sitting there, I remember sitting there telling, telling them guys, man, I, 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 if I could just have all live traps, I mean, I just, my catch ratio is so much better. And, you know, looking back, that's, that's hilarious, you know, because I mean, while live traps do work, you know, just the cost factor and, and just, the, you know, moving them around and everything, it's just, it's night and day from what it was now, but I still remember sitting there in the shop telling them guys, if you want to catch some stuff, that you got to have them live traps because it worked, right? And for a you know a newbie like me, it was that was where it was at. So anyway, I went through that first season. You couldn't buy traps around here. Uh, I remember my my first set. I I drove to an antique store uh, a couple of towns away and. I went in this antique store because I saw traps hanging outside and, uh, and he had this old barrel, this big whiskey barrel, and it was just filled with junky old, like one and a half, number one, uh, number 11 long springs. There may have been some coil springs in there, but they were antique traps, right? And about half of them were missing something. And I remember I, I went in there and I dumped that whole barrel out on the floor and I spent probably an hour and they're going through all the ones. And I picked out probably 10 or a dozen of these traps that, uh, that were functional. Right. And, uh, I'm sure he, I know he ripped me off. I can't remember what I paid for him, but I know it was way more than what I could buy, buy new traps for, but I didn't know no better. You know, I was, I was young and stupid. So anyway, that's how I got my first footholds. And like I said, that, that first couple of years was, was a struggle. Um, and as much as I hate to admit it, that following year, that following year, uh, the, the dog proofs came in and, and I started hearing about those and I, I, I want to try those. And, um, you know, the thing with the dog proofs, at least around here for me, I don't think it, it didn't necessarily make me a better trapper, but what it did was it opened up a lot more ground for me. Like I said, around here, trapping was kind of, I, I wouldn't say taboo, but just nobody knew about it. It's kind of like ice. We don't get enough ice around here to, uh, to really worry about. So whenever you do get ice and you go out ice fishing, people see you, they just freak out because they have no idea about it. Same thing with trapping. Um, 
you know, it's funny, you'll, you'll go out there and, and you'll be walking on three, four inches of ice and it's, it's good ice, but people, they just, they don't understand it. They think you're just going to fall right through where you go up north and it's just commonplace, you know, no different with the trapping. So I remember I bought a dozen dog proofs. I bought a dozen Duke dog proofs and, uh, I, I still remember that first check I went out and I, I didn't get them all, all the dozen set, but I went out and, and I set several of them there on a, on a little piece of property and, and I, I, I started catching and, and things just started kind of clicking for me that. So by using those dog proofs, it, it opened up a ton more ground for me. Permission was so much easier to get whenever you could show uh, people, you know, that, that, you weren't going to catch their house cats because like I said, all, although, you know, now I can tell you, you know, different baits and different things like that, uh, you know, to kind of mitigate that stuff. The, the dog proof trap allowed me a lot more access and a lot more permission, which in turn gave me a lot of opportunity to better my skills, if that makes any sense. So yeah, there was a couple years there I used dog proofs and then you know you showed people they started allowing you using footholds I got better with footholds which led to the canine trapping and and I you know stuff like this this one and a half so a lot of pocket sets a lot of dry land sets uh it, that progression really that that was kind of the start of it um that that was definitely the start of it so like I said, I've always been one to tinker. And, and I think that's what drew me more to trapping once I actually kind of started figuring it out and catching. Um, you know, trapping is super cool because it it's one of those sports that you can really kind of take to a different level if you want to. You can just buy some stuff and you can go set it out. Or you, you can be like me and I tinker and I, I always try to reinvent stuff. And it, that really appealed to me. That really, really appealed to me, the whole fact that, that you, could, you could do just about anything you wanted with this, with this sport. Uh, you know, it kind of wasn't set in stone. You didn't just go walk up to a deer stand, sit there, wait for a deer to come by. Uh, you know, you really had to go out there and you had to work for it. And, and, and I, I found that very appealing. Um, so I got into the fur handling side of it, you know. Um, and that really took off. I really, really enjoyed that side of it. And, you know, I've always been one to kind of, if I'm going to jump into something, I'm for the most part going to jump into it, you know, head first. And, and I did with the fur handling that really, really intrigued me. Um, you know, it's just something you can always get better at and tweak. And, and I really enjoyed that side of it. So yeah, that was kind of my, my journey into trapping. Um, and it just really progressed from there. Really getting into trapping, uh, it really had to do with that I was just, I was looking for a different challenge. I, I really, looking back, I was looking for something that, that, that would challenge me and, and trapping did it. You know, tra trapping's hard. Um, there's, there's no easy thing about that. There, there isn't. There, there's not a lot, there's always a lot of work that can be done. And I think that's really what appealed to me. So anyway, um, that's my story. That's, that's kind of how I got into trapping. Uh, like I said, it was more just, I wanted to challenge myself. And I still say to this day that trappers are more in tune with the land that they walk on than any other sport out there. Um, I've talked about it multiple times. You know, you're out here every single day. You're looking for something. You are, I am trying to make this critter right here step on something that big, and he has got all of this he can walk on. That to me is cool. That's appealing. So, anyway, I could ramble on for hours, y'all. This is something I really like. Um, but anyway, I'm going to cut the video off here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hey, remember, uh, for, for those of you out there who are, who are content creators, use that hashtag CCO Trapping Challenge in your title. We'll all be able to search it. And, uh, you know, I would love to be able to listen and, 
and hear different stories kind of like this. I, I'd be curious to see. You know, a, a lot of people I know got into the money thing. Money was never really a driving factor for me. Uh, it, it definitely helped, and I, and I will say I, I paid for all my equipment, but money was never really a driving factor for me. Um, the challenge of it definitely, definitely was more, more than anything. So I don't know, I'd be curious to see, like I said, um, comments down below for those of you who don't, I, I would really love to hear, you know, what got you into trapping. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for me. Uh, like I said, I would really like this to take off. So use that hashtag CCO trapping challenge. Use that in the title. That way it's searchable. But uh, anyway, be sure to check out some apparel if you if you would like to support the channel. Really does help. Um, and like I said, it's it's good stuff, right? Like I'm not peddling junk here. So anyway, uh, I appreciate all the positive reviews I've been getting from everybody who has who has purchased it. So all right, y'all, I'm gonna sign off. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, appreciate the view. See you on the next one.